This is how we worship. Prepare worship with prayer. Wear proper attire. Bring your Bible. Prepare your offering. Organize and clean your surroundings. Avoid distractions. Lift up your voice for praise and worship. And finally, give God your full attention. Hey, good morning everyone. Happy Sunday. Teacher Mian here. How is your morning going so far? I hope you're well. I hope you have slept well and had a great breakfast. You know, it's hard to believe that it's already uh, going to be June in just a couple of days. And then of course that means that summer is just around the corner and we have a lot of things that are coming up. And so I'm really excited. And maybe your family, uh, your parents have some days of vacation planned. And so I hope that you guys are looking forward to some fun summer times with your family. You know, when I was your age and I was still in school, I learned how to make timelines in school. And you've probably done this before. And a timeline is just a line on a piece of paper. And it's a way of mapping out or listing things that are important that have happened in your life. For example, you usually start out with the day or the year that you were born. And then one by one, things that were important to you as a kid, things that meant a lot to you. Uh, for me, I would write when we moved to the States from Korea, when we moved to Oregon, and when I started school. And so things like that, things that were important to you that you really want to remember. Now, do you know that God has a timeline too? But unlike our timelines, God is in complete control over what happens and when. And today, one of the things that we're going to learn is that God has a plan for the future, for our future. And believers can live with hope because Jesus will come back again. He will return. But before we get into all of this, let's go ahead and pray and start off uh, with just going to the Lord and committing our time of worship this morning. Would you bow your heads with me? Father, thank you for yet another week uh, where we have life and we're uh, breathing and we're able to do all the things that you have given to us. I thank you that our students are able to go to school, uh, that they have parents at home that love them and care for them. And we pray, God, that as we worship today, the power of your Holy Spirit would work in our hearts to open it, to open up our ears and our minds to receive and understand uh, your word, that we might become more and more like Jesus. And so be glorified during this time. Bless our students, God, with joy as they meet with you and as they worship you. We love you again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Welcome back, guys. You know, so far in this unit, we have been thinking about the question, what is the Bible about? And the Bible is a story of God's plan to save people through Jesus. You know, Jesus is where we find true hope and peace. The Bible reminds us that we can stand firm in our faith because we know the end of the story, that Jesus will return soon. You know, there are times in life when we will have to stand firm in what we believe and what we know to be truth. And believers can stand firm in the hope that we have in Jesus. And today, we're going to see how the early church stood firm even during hardships and challenges. You know, as the early church began to spread and grow, Paul uh, and other faithful believers, they traveled around and they shared the gospel. They preached that salvation comes only through faith in Jesus, yes. And some early churches, uh, they began to hear from false teachers, like we heard last week, that they needed to do more to be saved. And Paul told them that any other gospel that was preached to them was a lie, that it was not true. And about 20 years after Jesus died on the cross, Paul traveled to the city of Thessalonica, sharing the good news and starting a church. And later, Paul was forced to leave the city, but he still thought of the people of Thessalonica. So our Bible story today comes from the letters uh, that Paul wrote to the church at Thessalonica. Go ahead and open up your Bibles to 1st and 2nd uh, Thessalonians, and let's take a look at our Bible story today. About 20 years after Jesus died on the cross and rose again, Paul traveled to the city of Thessalonica. The people there worshipped idols. Some of them even worshipped the Roman Emperor. Paul told the people the good news about Jesus, and many people believed in Jesus. Paul started the church in Thessalonica, but some people did not like Paul or his teachings and they forced him out of the city. Paul worried about the people in Thessalonica. They had not been believers for very long. So Paul sent his friend Timothy to see how they were doing. Timothy brought back good news. Even though the Thessalonians faced suffering for their faith, they did not give up. Paul wrote a letter to encourage the believers. He told them that Jesus will return someday. On that day, Paul said, believers will no longer suffer. This message gave them great hope. Paul wrote to help the believers in Thessalonica know what is true and to teach them what happened to friends who had died. Believers can grieve with hope. Because Jesus died and rose again, God would bring with him those who had died if they trusted in Jesus. On the day that Jesus returns, the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a shout. Those believers who have died will be raised to life first. Then believers who are still alive will be raised up together to meet the Lord. We will live with him forever. No one knows when Jesus will come again. The day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night when you do not expect it. So be ready. God has promised us eternal life. He has saved us through his son, Jesus. Whether we are alive or dead, when Jesus returns, he will bring us all home with him forever. So continue to encourage each other because we have this future hope. The prophets in the Old Testament 
told about the day of the Lord, a day when God would come to judge the world and save his people. Paul said that in the future, on the day of the Lord, Jesus will return for his people and judge the wicked. Believers live with hope, knowing that Jesus will come again. All right, well, I hope you guys learned some things by watching that story. You know, the Bible is God's word, and therefore everything in the Bible is true. And as we go through the ups and downs of life, the words of Scripture can give you and I true hope. The Bible says that one day Jesus will return and he will reign and make everything that is wrong right again. He will judge the people who have rejected him and gather his people to himself. And this is an encouragement for believers when we go through hard times in life because we will. We can look forward knowing that one day Jesus will right every wrong. Paul told the church to stand firm as we wait for Jesus' return, and he encouraged the believers in Thessalonica with this truth. You know, they were new believers facing persecution and false teaching, but they did not give up their faith in the Lord. He reminded them, uh, the Thessalon uh, Thessalonians, that when a believer dies, other believers can be sad, but hopeful, knowing that God has taken that person to be with him. And because of Jesus' death and resurrection, believers who die have the promise of eternal life. And Paul told believers to be ready for Jesus' return. No one knows when Jesus will return, but Paul encouraged them to continue serving the Lord and preaching the gospel as they wait. And we should do the same, serving the Lord and bringing Him glory while we wait for His return. So today we come to our Christ Connection. Now, when Christians face challenges or hardships, we can rely on the hope that comes from being a child of God. The prophets of the Old Testament told about the day of the Lord, a day when God would come to judge the world and save his people. And Paul said that in the future, on the day of the Lord, Jesus will return for his people and judge the wicked and evil. Believers live with hope, knowing that Jesus will come again and that they will be taken to be with him. Now the hope of uh, God uh, is that he provides and he allows us, his children, to live in peace. It allows us to experience true joy that isn't changed by things that happen in life, no matter how hard it is. And so you guys, let's praise the one who provides us hope, joy, and the peace to all who believe in him. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you so much that we have hope in you, that you give us something that the world cannot. We can't buy it. We can't find it anywhere else other than in you. And so, God, we want to thank you that, first of all, you loved us so much that you sent your son to be born on the earth, to live a perfect and sinless life, that he might be the perfect sacrifice for us. And as he died on the cross and as he rose again, he defeated sin and death once and for all. And when we put our faith in him, you give us the free gift of salvation. You give us forgiveness and the gift of eternal life. And so, Lord, we pray that we would live as people who know this and truly believe it. Uh, people who are thankful for the life that you've given to us and people who are faithful to you and who have hope in you no matter what happens to us in life. So thank you, Lord, for your great love for us. Uh, there's nothing that we can do to repay you. The only thing that you want is for us to live uh, our life for you, with you at the center of it all. And so I pray that you give us strength to do that, uh, no matter how young we are. Father, we want to love you, so help us to do that, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this worship. Uh, take this offering and use it for your kingdom. Let the poor, let's, let us pray for the poor people. Let them get a job and protect us from the coronavirus. And uh, let us stay healthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. 
and there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Cast your cares on the Lord And He will sustain you He will sustain you Cast your cares on the Lord And He will sustain you He will sustain you Never, never, never let the righteous fall Let the righteous fall No He will never, never, never let the righteous fall Let the righteous fall No Cast your cares on the Lord I said, cast your cares on the Lord, and He will sustain you. He will sustain you. And He will never, never, never let the righteous fall. Let the righteous fall. No. He will never, never, never let the righteous fall Let the righteous fall No Psalm 55, 22 And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Amen. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Acts 4 verse and there is salvation in no one else, for there is no name given under heaven among men by which we must be saved. Acts 4, verse 12. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Acts Chapter 4, verse 12. Amen.